Welcome to Math 240 Applied Statistics Module 2. This is Brian Powers. Going to go over the main topics for this module, uh, primarily the, the so-called normal distribution. First off, we want to be familiar with what we mean when we say uh, a bell-shaped distribution. So I have here just a, a couple of histograms, and you want to look at the, the, the features that they share in common. Uh, the important ones are that they uh, have one mode in, m roughly in the middle. So you have the shape of, of kind of a mountain or a bell. We call it a bell curve or a bell-shaped distribution. And then the distribution is more or less symmetric. So what you want to see is in the middle of the this histogram, you have this peak, and then the on the two sides, it kind of trails off in these gradual slopes, these what we call tails. Now what we're going to be doing, going from these, which are histograms, where each of the bars represents a, uh, a, uh, a range of values to a continuous distribution. And this is what I mean when I say a continuous distribution. We have a smooth curve rather than uh, a, a, a chart that's made up of blocky bars. Okay, the, this is the Gaussian distribution, also called the normal distribution, um, and you could call it a, the bell curve as well. Now, I, first, before we get into it, I want to be very clear. It is called the normal distribution through an accident of language and an accident of history. It's not to say that this is a normal, this is normal and every other distribution is abnormal. So it doesn't mean this is a typical distribution. It just, it's called normal because there's technical mathematical reasons why. Don't concern yourself with them. So I don't want you to think that anytime some distribution is um, every day, it's called a normal distribution. That's not true at all. The normal distribution is very specific some data value, some random variable is normally distributed when the value you can take, um, uh, it's usually going to be somewhere around the mean and there's these, and, and then there's a much smaller probability that it takes a value out in the tails. So, um, this curve, uh, would be approximated by a histogram after we've collected some data. Okay. Two important things about a normal distribution you need to know are there are two parameters that uh, determine everything about a normal distribution. The first is the mean, and we designate it with the Greek letter mu. Uh, the mean is going to be the center of the distribution. Um, it also happens to be the median, and it happens to be the mode. And the next parameter is called sigma, uh, or it's the Greek letter sigma, which designates the standard deviation of this distribution. And in this picture, it shows um, little dotted lines are showing one, two, three standard deviation distances from the mean. And in any normal distribution, what you'll have is the probability that you that you observe a value that's within one st standard deviation from the mean is going to be about 68.26%. The probability that it takes a value or within two standard deviations from the mean is going to be 95.44%. And then the probability that you take a value within three standard deviations, 99.72%. So this gives us what we commonly call the 68, 95, 99.7 uh, empirical rule or rule of thumb. Uh, also, you should observe that the tails get very, very close to uh, zero. The, they get close to the x-axis after three standard deviations. And after four standard deviations, which is off this chart, um, there's virtually no probability left out in the tails. There is some because this distribution does con continue on forever in both directions. It never actually reaches zero, but it gets pretty darn close. And so for practical purposes, there's not much need to go out beyond four standard deviations. Um, okay, 
Now, a standard normal distribution is a special case when the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. So this is just the same picture, but uh, with the standard normal distribution. And where, as we refer generally to a, a random variable as x, uh, usually, or sometimes y, z is reserved for the standard normal random variable. So if we say that some value is has, follows a standard normal distribution, we would refer to that random variable as the variable capital Z. Okay, if you ever see Z, it's referring to standard normal. And if it's standard normal, it means the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. And generally speaking, if we ever talk about standardized data, it means the data has been uh, transformed, meaning we've subtracted the mean from all of the data values and we've scaled them by dividing by the standard deviation so that this new, this old data set becomes a new data set which is you know proportional but the, the new data set has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. It's just standardizing data is a way for us to compare apples and oranges, to compare data from two different sources or two different types of data. Um, so standardizing uh, is very much linked to this idea of a standard normal distribution. But for what you need to know is a standard normal has a mean of zero, standard deviation of one. Okay, now one task you'll be asked to do is to calculate normal probabilities. And you'd be asked to do something like this. Uh, what is the prob... You have a, a standard normal random variable. What is the probability that it takes a value less than 1.34? And there, the old school way of doing this is to get a piece of paper called a z-table uh, and look it up in there. Uh, this is really very archaic, and I really don't want you to be looking at z-tables. There are much more efficient and precise methods available. Plenty of calculators, um, TI-83, T-84, have normal probability uh, functions in them, but you can go to a lot of websites. StatCrunch has has fantastic normal probability calculators. This is a picture of a screenshot from an just another website that has a normal probability calculator where you can um, plug in the the parts of the problem that you're asked about and you can calculate the probability very quickly and it gives you a little sketch showing the shaded part which represents the um, the area that that is uh, values less than 1.34 you'll see a bunch of examples of this in my stat crunch video and i think you'll get used to it very quickly you want to remember this is this is like L kind of like looking at a histogram, except it's 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 the smooth case of a histogram. It's like the bars are so thin that you've created a smooth curve. Um, now, the next major concept is the idea of a sampling distribution. Now, because in statistics, we are not really concerned with looking at just a single individual out of a population, but instead we're interested in looking at, um, say, a, a sampling of 50 or 100 or 1,000 out of the population. And then from that, saying something about the whole population, right, statistical inference, um, we need to know something about the statistics that are calculated from the data. So here's the idea. If the sample that you take is a, a selection of random individuals and you measure some characteristic of all these individuals, then all of these measurements could be considered as random variables. Okay, like observations of a random variable multiple times from, um, from some distribution. And then when you calculate a statistic based on this data, it's going to be calculated from random data so the resulting statistic will also be a random variable. Okay, so random variables have their own sample, their, their own uh, probability distribution. So that's the, that's the background. The, uh, the, the main thing to know is the sample mean is treated as a random variable with its own distribution. And 
and here's the, the, the big fact about the normal distribution. If the population you're sampling from is a normal distribution with, a, with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, and if you sample with a sample size of n, then your sample mean, x bar, uh, will also follow a normal distribution. The mean of the sample mean, <laughs> so I know that's confusing, maybe I'll say the mean of the sample average will be the same as the mean of the distribution. So we say mu x bar, that is this notation for the mean of x bar, or the mean of the sample average, uh, that's equal to mu. The standard deviation of x bar is not going to be the same as the standard deviation of the original distribution. It's going to be smaller. And you divide by the square root of the sample size n. So, um, so you can see in this picture to the side, as your sample size increases and increases and increases, you can see that the red line showing the mean is the same for all of these distributions, but you can see that the spread away from that mean is less and less. So this is getting more and more concentrated at the mean, and that's what you get when you have a smaller standard deviation. Besides the sample average, we'll be interested in the sample proportion as a random variable with a sampling distribution. And so if you are, we call the, we call the sample proportion p hat, so uh, treating it as a random variable, capital P, with a little, a little, uh, what are they called, caret on top. We call it a, a hat in statistics. So P hat. Uh, in in statistics, you'll see the little hat is used on top of a, um, a symbol to represent an estimate for. So I don't know why the sample mean isn't mu hat, but it isn't. Um, or m hat even, but it, but anyway, we use p hat, and later on we'll be using y hat and some other things with hats on top. So p hat is the sample proportion, which is an estimate of the population proportion, p. Um, so if you're if you are sampling from a population with proportion little p, sam uh, population size capital N and sample size little n. Uh, as long as three, three requirements are satisfied, uh, we will have a sampling distribution for p hat. So the three requirements are, first, your sampling must be done randomly and independently, essentially meaning that the uh, individuals in your sample are just, a, they're just randomly picked, and the answers that one individual gives are not affected by the answers that the other individuals give. Uh, the second requirement is that the sample size isn't too big, so no more than 5% of the population, and we check that by calculating if little n is, uh, s is smaller than or equal to 0 0.05 times big N. That's 5% of the population. And also, we need to make sure that the sample size isn't too small. Uh, and the check for that is n times p times 1 minus p, uh, and make sure that's greater than or equal to 10. Um, and as long as those three are satisfied, then the distribution of p hat should be approximately a normal distribution. And the mean of this distribution will be little p, the same as the population proportion, the standard deviation of this, uh, of p hat, also called the standard error, it's the standard deviation of our estimate, so we call that a standard error in statistics, is going to be, this is a little formula, the square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n. So p is the probability that, that some individual says yes to our question, 1 minus p is the probability they say no, and then little n is the sample size. Um, anyway, you can just put that in a calculator, and that's your standard error, and then you know what the sampling distribution is. Um, and once you have a sampling distribution, you can answer questions about how likely this or that may be for the sample proportion. 
both of these sampling distributions are uh, generalized in what we call the central limit theorem, which is a very major result, which a very non-technically says that no matter what the population distribution is, as long as your sample is uh, big enough and good enough, uh, your sample mean will be uh, approximately a normal distribution. Um, or perhaps a t-distribution will be looking at a t-distribution in some cases. But anyway, that's for a later module. Um, that's actually it for now. I really encourage you to look at the StatCrunch tutorial next to see how we do some examples of uh, this stuff in practice and how to use the Stat software to help you do it. All right. Until next week. Bye.